He's been 007 for 15 years. Daniel Craig is back as Bond for the last time in the movie No Time to Die. But is it worth a trip to the cinema? Hi, my name's Bond. <laughs> Just kidding, it's Carl. Thank you so much for joining me. In today's video, it's the review of the brand new movie, No Time To Die. Yes, it has finally arrived on the big screen, 18 months after its original release date. No Time To Die is in cinemas everywhere now, in what will be the last time we see Daniel Craig starring as a double-O agent. It's a movie I was looking forward to long before the pandemic, with a budget of almost £200 million. This could be the blockbuster movie of 2021. I know my cinema was busy when I went. If you would like to check out my Daniel Craig special, where I try and put all Daniel Craig's 007 movies in some kind of order, I'll leave the link for that video down below. And if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, Carlini09, hello, thank you so much for joining me. Please consider subscribing and sharing if you can, because it really does help the channel out. I really appreciate it as well, thank you. The story follows Bond, played by Daniel Craig, who has kind of retired from MI6 and he's enjoying a nice, peaceful, quiet life. But this is short-lived when his old friend from the CIA, Felix, played by Jeffrey Wright, shows up, asking for his help to rescue a kidnapped scientist. Now, Bond being Bond just cannot resist, but the mission turns out to be far more complicated than first thought, when Bond learns that bad guy Safin, played by Rami Malek, is planning to unleash a lethal technology that could wipe out anyone in the world. The movie did contain some good one-liners, which I thought was quite funny. And it was nice to see the women in this movie play stronger characters, as well as starring the usual Ralph Fiennes as M, Ben Whishaw as Q, and Naomi Harris as Moneypenny. We had the three ladies taking on a more full-on roles, which was great to see. Leah Seydoux, I really do hope I've got that name right. Apologies if I had that wrong. She was Inspector, she returns as Madeline. And we also see Lashana Lynch, who makes her first appearance as a double O agent. And also Anna Diamos, who was getting a lot of attention in the papers. I would have liked to have seen her in this movie a little bit more longer than what she actually was, which was around about 10 to 15 minutes. Where's 007? I want to mention Rami Malek, who is a brilliant actor. And he played Safin in this, the Bond villain. And he kind of reminded me of the old school Bond villains. He was definitely a threat as a villain, but there was kind of something missing. I can't quite place what it was. Maybe use him a little bit more in this movie and possibly make him a little bit more evil. When we did get to the action scenes of this movie, they did not disappoint. They moved at a fast, quick pace with amazing visuals and camera work. I thought the whole cinematography of this movie was excellent. Then the movie would slow down for us to catch our breath, but not too much so we got bored. There are certain scenes in the movie that could remind you of the older Bond movies with Sean Connery and Roger Moore, which I thought was a nice touch and good to see. And like all Bond movies, we do get these locations set all over the world. I did actually find it a good read to see what they had to go through in order to allow that Aston Martin DB5 to race through the beautiful town of Italy. And as all Bond fans know, the stunts are real and they do try to keep the CGI to a minimum. This movie had multiple delays which saw Daniel Craig needing surgery on an ankle because he hurt himself while filming. When the movie was finally made, the production team held on to this movie for 18 months rather than release it straight onto the streaming services because they wanted to give this movie a big cinema release it deserves. And I totally agree. After watching this movie, you will definitely need to watch this movie on the big screen to get that surround sound around you and that huge picture. It's definitely one for the big screen. And it's a movie we're probably going to need to watch more than once as well. With a running time of nearly three hours long, I do feel that the running time is probably slightly too long for this movie. It takes its time to introduce us to new characters, which I feel did work in places because we had that mixture of the action scenes as well. Name? Bond. James Bond. All four of Daniel Craig's previous Bond movies, the opening scenes contain this fast action 
action-paced scene. But with No Time To Die, it took a more different approach. It didn't happen, which I feel was a bit of a shame because I was expecting this movie to go the same way. But it's nice to sometimes change things so you don't expect it. Sadly, No Time To Die isn't Daniel Craig's best Bond movie of the ones he's done. And I would probably suggest watching Spectre before you watch No Time To Die, but it's not essential. Please do join me in the comments. I would love to know for this video. If you've seen No Time To Die yet, what's your actual thoughts on this movie? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? I would love to hear. I do feel that No Time To Die is definitely gonna have mixed reviews among Bond fans. That's all I'm saying. No Time To Die has a running time of two hours, 43 minutes long, so it's almost three hours long. It's rated a 12A here in the UK. There's no sex or nudity, there's mild profanity, and there is a lot of violence. I'm going to give the James Bond movie No Time to Die four out of five popcorns. If you would like to know what my popcorn score rating means, I'll leave it down below in my description. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this review. I will be back Monday with a double unboxing. Can't wait for Monday. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. I'll see you Monday. Bye-bye.